Hey guys, what's up? This is your friend and tutor Manas and it's going to be yet another session in this lecture series on engineering drawing. Today, we're going to be talking about auxiliary planes and in this journey, we'll be solving a problem based on projection of solids. Earlier, the problems that I had solved was completely based on the change of position method but today, I'll be comparing both the methods, change of position method as well as the auxiliary plane method or what is known as or is popularly known as the change of reference method. So, let's see what the problem has in store here we go it goes like this so we are talking about a pentagonal prism base edges or the base sides whatever you can say it's 25 millimeters each and the height of this prism okay has been given as 50 millimeters or you can also say that the axis length center to center has been given as 50 millimeters now this prism has as many as how many faces? 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. 5 rectangular faces. And it is resting on one of its rectangular faces. So, it can rest like this. Okay, this way on the HP. It can rest like this. It can rest like this, whichever way. But there is a specific position of this pentagonal prism. What is that? Well, let us ex extract data from the question by reading it further. Kept in such a way that the axis has been inclined at an angle of 45 degrees with the VP. Okay, so it's it's something like this. If you watch carefully, it's like this. Axis starts from here, ends over here, and if you if you if you were to extend a line from here, the angle that this line makes with the vertical plane is 45 degrees. So, okay, so if the axis is inclined to the VP, our initial assumption as per the standard procedure that I've explained to you is this. We're going to slam this entire object with its base on the vertical plane or you can also keep it uh, a certain distance away from the vertical plane also but make sure that this base is parallel to the VP okay now just think about this this is the horizontal plane my hand okay and let us just assume that the back portion that is the back pentagon of this pentagonal prism is kept at a distance of 20 millimeters from the VP now this distance can only be seen from the top anyways first of all the most important thing is from where to start whether we should draw the front view or we should draw the top view now let me ask you a question from where can you see the true shape of its space true shape of its space well obviously the answer is from the front therefore you have to begin by making the front view first so let's have an xy line this way okay that's the front view this is exactly what you're gonna see and since this entirely lies on the horizontal plane therefore this over here, which apparently appears as a line, this appears as a line, but there is a rectangle behind. Okay. So let's name them. That's it. Five corners at the front in the form of A, B, C, D, E with a dash. Five corners at the back in the form of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 with a dash. Since all of this is a part of the front view. Now, when you take a look at this pentagonal prism, which is resting on the HP on one of its faces from the top, you're going to see this distance certain distance away from the vertical plane in the form of 20 millimeters. So this portion over here will appear as if it does, it is below the XY line at a distance of 20 millimeters. Now let me draw this. This is the center and here we go. That's uh, the distance. And when you look at this object from the top, these two rectangular faces are going to be visible. Or you can also say this is visible. This is visible. This, these three edges will be visible. That's all you'll be able to see directly from the top. Now, as far as the hidden edges are concerned, these are the hidden edges, which cannot be seen directly, but their presence has to be made filled in the form of hidden lines. Here we go. That's it. All right. The top view is done. Let me do the dimensioning. Yeah. In the second step, we are going to do this. You can do it this way, 45 degrees or this way. In both the cases, the angle that the axis makes with the vertical plane should be equal to 45 degrees. So guys, watch carefully. Axis starts from here ends here okay so you can say that the axis is exactly below this edge what is the name of this edge it's 5e let me show you it's 5e so if i incline this 5e edge at an angle of 45 degrees the axis will automatically get itself inclined at an angle of 45 degrees so that's exactly what we're going to be doing right now we'll be changing the position of the object from step one like this into step two like this that's it 45 degrees and we have recreated this entire top view over here at an angle of 45 degrees. That's it. Okay, let me name the points. A, B, C, D, E, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
Now we're going to take a look at this object from the front from over here. Let us have the project aligned bottom to top and from left to right. Okay. Now guys, if you watch carefully, this A, B, C, D appears in the form of a line, but it's not a line. It's a pentagon that will be visible from the front. This A1 is an edge like this, like this. It's an edge. This it's an edge. This is 5E edge that is also visible from the front. So A1 is visible, 5E is visible and 2E, 2B in fact, from the front is also visible. Okay. These three edges, these three edges are going to be visible from the front. So it's going to be something like this. And whatever is not visible, it's absolutely hidden. That's it. And now let me name the points. This is the axis. And this is exactly how the front view and the top view of a pentagonal prism um, is when it is kept at an angle of uh, 45 degrees with the VP with one of its rectangular faces in absolute contact with the horizontal plane. So that was all about the change of position method. Now, there is an easy way. In a sense that the time taken by this method, that is the change of reference method or the auxiliary pl plane method is far less than this change of position method. Okay. First step, initial assumption is going to be same. We're going to assume it like this. And then we're going to start off with the front view and then by making the top view. So let me make this again. Okay. In change of position method, we did this. Okay. We changed the position of the object. We kept the axis at an angle of 45 degree. We did not change the position of the reference plane or the vertical plane or the horizontal plane, whatever you can say. But in this method, the auxiliary plane method, what we're going to do is we'll let the object stay in its initial position. And what we'll do is we'll have an auxiliary vertical plane. So what is the final product? It's the front view. So front view can be obtained or an auxiliary front view can be obtained in an auxiliary vertical plane. So what I'll try to do is I'll try to have an auxiliary vertical plane over here, which makes an angle of 45 degrees with the axis. Okay. It's going to be something like this. So the angle made over here is going to be equal to 45 degrees. Okay. You can keep it a certain distance away. Okay. Uh, outside this object's front view, you can say, but the angle over here is going to be equal to 45 degrees. You can draw it over here also. Okay. But make sure that the angle made is again, 45 degrees. Now what needs to be done is you have to look at this object from over here in a direction perpendicular to this line. Now you just need to make projector lines from all these points from A, B, C, D, E and from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in such a manner that they intersect this X1, Y1 at an angle of um, 90 degrees. The best way to do this is with the help of a mini drafter. You can do so by keeping one scale of a mini drafter over here aligned with X1, Y1 such that the other scale, okay, this way so that the other scale will automatically become perpendicular. That's uh, the easy way of doing this task. Now. What, uh, what are we doing? We are creating the auxiliary front view over here. For that, this front view, the front view just before this one, the new one which is about to be made, this front view has to be taken as the reference. Okay, so the arcs of all these 10 points have to be taken with respect to x, y and they have to be put up over here with respect to x1, y1. Now let's say we want to have point a dash. So the distance of point a dash from x1 uh, from x, y is this much. So you can keep one leg of your compass here, other leg over here. And with this guy as the center, you need to put an arc and that's going to be point A dash. You need to do the same stuff for B dash also. So the distance of B dash from X, Y is how much? It's zero. So B is going to lie here only. That's it. Distance of C dash from X, Y is how much? Again, zero. So C will be over here. Now keep one leg of your compass here, other leg over here. And with that much amount as the radii with this as the center, you need to cut an arc and that's going to be point D. Similarly, keep one leg of your compass here, other leg over here and with that much amount as the radii and with this as the center, you need to cut an arc and that's going to be point E. Similarly, you can obtain the remaining points in the form of one, two, three, four, five, all of them with a dash. And that's exactly what you're going to get. This line is not a line. There are five points in that line. It's a pentagon. Okay. Uh, although a squeezed up pentagon, when you look at it from over here. Now I can draw this, the portion of the solid, which you can actually see is from here to here. So this portion will be visible and this portion will be visible. So that's completely visible. 5A will be visible. That's it. Um, 1A will be visible. 1A is visible and 2, 3 is also visible. 2, 3, it's not 2, 3, it's 2B in fact. 2B is visible. That's it. That's all the portion of the pentagonal prism that's visible from over here. 
and the portion which is not visible has to be given some respect in the form of a hidden line so so you have to make an edge from 4 to 5 from 3 to 4 and from 4 to d this way okay so this was the edges or these were the edges in fact which were not visible from uh, this reference so that's the change of reference method no change of position took place rather the auxiliary vertical plane was kept in such a manner that it made an angle of 45 degrees with the axis and here no change of plane took place what took place is the change of position all right the object was positioned in such a manner that it made an angle of 45 degrees with the vertical plane so guys that was all from my side for today if you've got any doubt or query to write them down in the comment section below i'll be very happy to answer them and if you believe that this video tutorial has added value to your knowledge of engineering drawing or engineering graphics then do share and like this video subscribe to this channel and also press the bell icon so that whenever i upload a new video you get a notification you get an update and also do tell your friends about this channel so that they can also benefit they can also learn well i'm going to be back with more such videos on drawing and mechanics until then it's a wrap this is manas patnaik signing off take care have a great day keep learning and keep drawing